do Christians sin? Yes. Um, do we continue in sin? So it depends what you, how you define carnal Christian. I, I'm not a big fan of that term. Paul says in Galatians, I say walk by the Spirit in Galatians 5.16, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Well, the, the verb carry out is in the active voice. It's continual and ongoing, it seems to be. Um, in John, John says that, that um, uh, those who are in Christ do not practice sin. So first John three is what I was yeah, referring to. Yeah. So I, I, I think that there's this idea that there is no such thing as a Christian that lives in in habitual, unrepentant, who just wallows in it, lives in it. That's what they do. Um they don't constantly carry it out, practice it like a martial art, like they're training in it and getting better in it. Do we sin? Yes. But when we're born again, when the Spirit of God is inside us and we truly have placed our faith in Christ and repented of our sin, we hate our sin. And we don't wall, we don't we don't love to be in it. We don't stay in it. So are we carnal as Christians in the sense that do we sin? Yeah. Do we sometimes sow to the flesh? Yeah. And, and not walk in the Spirit as we're supposed to? Yeah. Do we always walk in the Spirit? No. Um, so, no, there's no such thing as a carnal Christian if that means you think you can be a Christian and, um, and you're not under, to use the terminology, the Lordship of Christ. Uh, you're not saved. Um, but if you're a Christian and you're struggling with sin, that doesn't mean you're not saved. You're just a normal Christian. And that is not going to be removed from us until glory. Yeah, that, that's so good. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, Romans chapter 6. Romans is, is so amazing in, in different ways, but Paul has this method of teaching through diatribe. The, uh, that is that he's, he's imagining an interlocutor in, his mind, uh, interlocutor in his mind. So he asks questions that he's thinking his audience would ask. It's almost like he's pinned, like good teachers do that. You think of, and preachers, you think of somebody in your church or congregation that might need to hear this or whatever, and you're anticipating their objection, so you answer it in your message before they can object. And he does that in Romans 6. And this was, this particular text in Romans 6 was instrumental in my own salvation because I saw myself as believing like this, which was wrong. In fact, Paul's going to say by no means, very strong in the Greek. He says in Romans 6, 1, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? And he, he answers immediately, meganoita. It's the strongest way to express abhorrence in the Greek. By no means. May it never be. And he gives a reason why. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus? We've been baptized into his death? It does not mean, to Ryan's point, that Christians don't sin. Of course we do. No one, if you really understand the gospel, how can you continue to live in it and celebrate it? Right? Knowing that your sin put your Savior on the cross. And that's Paul's thing, point here. May, may it never be. Do we continue to sin because this idea that grace covers us all, so we use grace as a license now. We've turned liberty into a license. And he, he condemned that right off the bat right here. I remember reading that when I was just around the, the, the cusp of getting saved. Maybe I just got saved or almost about, and I was just starting to read in the Bible, and I got to that, and I was like, that's my life, because that's how I used to think. My parents are Christians, and I'm riding the coattails of their faith and thinking, well, as long as I just mentally believe in Jesus Christ, died for my, my sins, and I'm good to go for the rest of my life. And my life looked nothing like a New Testament believer's life, other than the, maybe the, the, sin, the sinners in Corinth or something like that, as close as maybe it came to, which is not a good example. You know, I came to Romans 6.1, I'm like, wow, that's me, using grace as a license to sin. And Paul's clear, may it never be. If you truly understand Christ died for your sins, how can you continue to revel and celebrate the very thing that put your Savior on the cross? 